All right, here we go, everyone. We are in lecture four, and this is lighting. Lighting is really an overlooked aspect of filmmaking. It's not something that you just sit there and normally comment on uh, the lighting. Um, sometimes you'll see it almost as a flippant joke. Uh, more in the theatrical world, uh, people will come to a play or something and uh, an actor in the play will say, well, how did you like it? And they'll respond, well, the lighting was great. Um, so it kind of shows that it's an important part, but also something we take for granted, maybe flippantly. Um, but let's focus on what what does light add to a film? Um, well, first of all, I think lighting has to be realistic, regardless of how it's uh, being used, shaped, manipulated, anything like that. Um, it should mimic how we expect light to behave uh, or to be shaped. Uh, can uh, be in regards to any type of light um, that is presented in a realistic way, whether it's the geography of the room or environment that is established. How would we view light in reality? Um, so realistic lighting, and this semi-blurry still, um, is from a movie called Barry Lyndon, uh, directed by uh, Kubrick. So uh, they did this one all shot by candlelight. All the indoor was shot by candlelight. In fact, they had to get a special lens from NASA. And a whole conspiracy there about Stanley Kubrick and the moon landing and using NASA's lens. Neither here nor there. But, um, you know, regardless of the source of the light, we expect it to behave a certain way um, realistically. Um, you know, so we can kind of start to see the source of a light, where it's coming from, how it uh, hits our our actor, actress, objects, whatever in the room. Um, we we just expect it to kind of behave uh, in in a certain way. And when we're outdoors, uh, the way sunlight hits us is different at different points of the day. So we can uh, very easily tell the difference between high noon and sunset. But again, um, it's it's kind of lighting the scene in such a way as that we're not thrown off by it. Um, the shadow and the light work together in, in such a way that helps to kind of create meaning and depth, um, even when used realistically. The pattern of the shadow or the shape at the time can kind of give you a deeper mood or in this case, kind of make you feel boxed in like a jail. Um, the way that the shadow is is playing kind of right in here. Um, so we can use uh, realistic lighting in, in different ways. Now, pictorial lighting um, is lighting used for a dramatic or thematic purpose. We're not always sure of the source of light, uh, and it behaves in a clearly designed or ma manipulated way. Um, so from Dr. Strangelove, you probably can tell up till now I have a, a, a fondness for Kubrick, but um, they're inside this war room and they have light coming in and we're not sure the source. We're never really uh, told exactly where we are, um, but kind of help to serve what was going on in the scenes um, from Silence of the Lambs. Uh, a little harsh, glad it's kind of blurry, but we can kind of see the lighting is clearly fabricated. Um, same uh, here, we can see, we don't really care where the source is, where it's coming from, anything. Well, we kind of know the source, but it's it's multi um, sort of sourced area to light the scene. Um, again, more for the design than the actual um, realism of light. So we have different kinds, uh, degrees of light. We have a hard light, which is directional. It has high contrast and fast fall off which gives a clear line in shadows we also have soft light so it's diffuse that is the light is going through some source to kind of scatter it and not make it so directional not uh, like a spotlight but kind of a, a soft uh, flowy kind of light we'll look at some examples and in this there's the the contrast is um is a little lower so we can see here uh, hard lighting in an exterior. This is kind of more like I was saying that high noon look. So we have some very clearly defined hard um, shadows kind of seen throughout um, and seems 
uh, very directional where it's coming from. Uh, film noir had this convention of, of using light in uh, a certain way. We'll kind of get more on it, but we you can see this very hard, very defined uh, light with very clear shadow and a lot of contrast. So soft lighting is just the opposite. It just feels soft. It feels like what it says. Um, we see this again. That's why we kind of like sunset. It creates this very nice soft light where light from the sun is hitting the atmosphere in such a way as it creates this golden hour as they call it um, in the film industry magic hour golden hour because those shadows are almost in a sense non-existence that light is really scattered and dispersed we can kind of see two here see how the shadow just kind of slowly blends away into darkness it's not very uh hard lighting it's a very nice soft uh lighting see here again these shadows are very a little bit more gradual than we'd see um you know with hard lighting so very very soft very polished um so what type of genres do we typically see these in well probably most of them have all of them um but specifically hard or soft lighting when we see take a minute think about that which which of where do you see a lot of high contrast in shadows versus soft contrast in shadows? Um, certainly a uh, horror film um, has very hard, very dark um, shadows kind of, kind of seen throughout soft. We kind of see that more comedies, romance, things like that. It just adds to the overall softness of what's going on. Um, so light and character can reveal the nature or state of mind of a character. It can uh, indicate uh, inner conflict or external conflict. We can see how in this picture, this light is almost cut our character in half. So we kind of have this duality going on, especially in the, in this case that the, the eye, one of the eyes is darkened. So we're only getting half of the full picture. Uh, lighting can glamorize somebody older films 30s 40s 50s early 60s the starlet was always shot just slightly out of focus to give this uh really soft look to um but the way that the light is hitting uh the actress here we can see um that it's sort of glamorizing and accentuating the cheeks and uh really framing uh framing her nicely in this way and, and in that sense the light adds to the character and the way that we feel about her um that could lighting can change obviously and, and it can you know manipulate and warp our opinion scene by scene um but certainly it can add to the glamorization or de-glamorization as it were uh given the needs of a scene a character could go from really you know bright light and um you know, really enveloped and shaped well by the light to almost dark. So you could almost go from this back up to this, you know, a character can kind of, kind of switch at a given moment. Um, so this is a film that we're going to watch in this course, but, and it'll be something worth noting as you're watching it. Um, the Godfather, uh, use lighting in a very thematic and, and interesting way. Um, really you could put the Godfather in any week and it'll, it'll fit in well with whatever the topics are, but certainly they took initially a lot of criticism for the lighting of the eyes in the opening scenes, because we look to the eyes, the eyes are where we get information from, uh, people in our day-to-day -day life for film. That's, that's just where we should look is in someone's eyes, someone's eyes. And, uh, they kind of did this raccoon eye thing in the Godfather that we can't see, uh, Don Corleone's eyes all the time, especially in the opening. So it added this air of mystery uh, to the character. All right, so there's a classic Hollywood setup for lighting. It's called three-point lighting. We have a key light, which is what it sounds like. It's our main light. It's the key light for lighting the scene. We have a fill, um, which will uh, help to uh, counter the shadow. And we have backlights. Um, we have two different ratios. We have a high key ratio um, in which the shot is uh, evenly lit, um, that the, the ratio between the key light and fill light 
is you know closer to closer to one to one two to one somewhere in there um so you'll kind of see as, as i show some examples here um and then low is just the opposite so we have a lot of shadows um and areas of the frame left underexposed this gives you kind of a bird's eye view of three-point lighting so we have our um our object and we'll assume a camera is right here for now um so the first light that comes on is this key light um, and then the backlight, and then you use fill light or some sort of reflecting device to fill in because you can kind of see there's going to be more shadow over here on this side. So your fill light just kind of adds in those those shadows, but that's an overhead of what it looks like. So here's an example of high key. We can tell that the light is coming in over here. Um, you know, mostly looking at the room, we can see, oh, it's darker here, it's brighter here. Um, but we can see on the face, the bright side with the dark side, there's a difference, obviously, but it's not huge. It's not profound. It's it's high key lighting, very, uh, very even. All right. So we have low key lighting. So our light source is coming in over here and there is no fill light. There's no backlight, Maybe a little back here, um, but certainly nothing on this side. It's an extreme example. So the ratio, uh, there is no fill light. <laughs> um, so it's a very... Uh, low-key lit scene. Um, we want continuity to last throughout a scene. We want shots to uh, not take us out of the moment. So the lighting can't change too much. Someone can't be, you know, dark in one shot and then all of a sudden they're bright in the next and they haven't really moved to a location where we might assume light would be like a window or something like that. Um, we want it to make sense and we want it to last throughout the scene. We want that light motivated. We want to know where it's coming from and that it logically makes sense. Um, we also know, as we've talked about before, conventions that agreed look uh, of a film of a particular genre between director and audience, that which we've come to expect. So there's conventions of lighting. The example I just showed with Charlton Heston from Touch of Evil is called a film noir. Uh, gangster film kind of where that sort of comes from the uh the old uh, bootlegger type films of the 30s and uh that era um so part of it was it just kind of came out of the horror um crime genre and became a thing of its own but we came to expect that really low key lighting um in it and to this day you still see some examples of film noir uh that come up but as i mentioned before something like Horror films, usually dark, uh, usually low key, um, something that we've just kind of come to expect, expect. They generally take place at night and they'll have kind of a similar look when it comes to lighting. It can be broken. Um, so something like comedies are typically, um, you know, brighter and has that high key sort of ratio to it where everything's kind of evenly lit but you could take a co uh, comedy like hot fuzz and and film it more like action that might have more contrast that might have um you know more of a low-key kind of feel which you don't always see in comedies uh, another movie like midsummer the horror almost was the fact that it was shot outdoors in kind of pristine conditions you don't expect a horror film to feel safe in the environment and the lighting kind of made you feel safe um, so conventions can be broken. Um, all right. So to wrap up this lecture, that's just kind of the bare bones of how things are. Go ahead and, uh, watch this, this video. Don't worry. He mentions a part two in it. Um, but you just need to watch part one and it'll kind of give you some examples and you can start to see it firsthand. Um, you know, how that three point lighting works and how all the different key light, fill light and backlight come together. So hope you enjoyed this lecture, um, just the basics. So remember, big takeaways are how does the light add to the story? That's the big thing I want you to be thinking about as we're moving forward.